Gentleman from Fairfax, Mr. Surabell. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege. The gentleman has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure what happened this morning. I think I might, must have hit my head last night, or maybe it was all the tea I was drinking this morning, but I woke up angry at the federal government. Um, and I don't know how many of you all are aware of what's been going on in Northern Virginia, but um, we had something, the Base Realignment and Closure Commission announced some changes about five years ago, six years ago now. And one of the things the federal government decided to do in its infinite wisdom was to transfer about 24,000 new employees to a military base right at the edge of my seat, right in the middle of Delegate Albo's seat, right next to Delegate Sickles' seat, right in the middle of Delegate Herring's seat, right next to Delegate Corey's seat. Um, most people would say, well, 24,000 jobs, $6 billion in investment, what a great thing they're bringing to your district. Well, you know what else the federal government's bringing? Traffic. The federal government is taking thousands of people off the metro and sticking them right on the roads that already can't handle it. Delegate Herring's situation, she's got people, 6,000 new people being put into, into a facility that people are going to have to take four left turns off an interstate to get into. It doesn't make any sense. You got people on the edge of my seat, they're going to have to be going through 20 stoplights to get to this military base. You got people coming up from the south that already can't get to a base that aren't going to be able to get in. And what is the federal government proposing to do to pay for all these improvements? Absolutely nothing. They're leaving the bill with Virginia. And folks, it ain't fair. It ain't right. And Senator Warner had a group, the National Academy of Sciences, do a study uh, to determine whether or not federal law to change. Because under current federal law, and this is important, this applies to Fort Lee, it applies to anybody that's got a military base near their district, the only time a federal government will pay for any local transportation improvements in your district is if traffic doubles because of the change. Now, in my district, Route 1 happens to carry 60,000 vehicles through Fort Belvoir. That means that in order for the, before the federal government will pay a penny towards a local transportation improvement, Traffic would have to go from 60,000 to 120,000 people because of this change. It's, 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 a, it's a rule that's designed for rural areas, and it doesn't work. And Senator Warner, the NAS looked at this, and they said, you know what, federal law needs to change. And the federal government needs to step up and start funding local improvements when these kinds of uh, problems are inflicted on localities. If there is a commending resolution that we ought to be passing, it's that. Now, to add insult to injury, I just read last night, or yesterday, that our, the uh, new majority in the, in the Congress has decided, in their infinite wisdom, to defund the $150 million of money that the federal government is putting in to pay for Metro. And this is a compromise that was brokered by Congressman Tom Davis about three or four years ago. Congressman Connolly put in a budget amendment last night to put that money back into the budget. And what happened? It was ruled out of order. Folks, that money is matching money that we have agreed to pay for. And now the federal government is, 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 is threatening to pull it back. Congressman Connolly last night uh, issued a press release asking our governor to step in to do something about this. And it's desperate. It's desperate that we do so, folks. Metro in Northern Virginia is America's subway. It's a national security issue. Metro takes thousands of cars off the road. Metro, from my point of view, it's the plutonium, it's the rocket fuel of Northern Virginia's economy. This is an issue, it's not only important, it's not only important to Northern Virginia, it's important to this whole state. If you look at the revenue report that came out yesterday, where was the job growth in this state? It was in Northern Virginia. Where was the revenue growth in this state? It was in Northern Virginia. Folks, we need to call on Congress, if there is any commending resolution we ought to be issuing, it ought to be directed to Congress to step up and do what they promise and pay for what they promised to do three or four years ago and live up to their end of the deal instead of pulling the rug out like they are now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.